I'm on my way to Barcelona. It's about 20 past 11. Catching the train at Kingsborough. Right, I'm at the South Terminal, Gatwick Airport, and uh, it's about, well, I don't know, quarter past, 20 past three. And I don't check in for another three hours, but uh, so I'm going to go and find a chair, try and get a couple of hours sleep, and then uh, check in. Shit old this is. Tell you what, Barcelona, fuck me. Pretty sad. You've got a giant screen in front of you. Corrugated iron. Just fucking can't climb Mount Everest just to get me seat. And uh what do you say? it's just fucking shit.
traffic it should take between 20 and 30 minutes. Uh, just some information for you when we arrive at the airport. Hi guys, uh, it's been uh, quite a long time since we uh, we had a bit of a chat, um, certainly on uh, YouTube, uh, and uh, there's been nothing going up basically because it's me that puts it up, and obviously I've been out in Barcelona, and yesterday I got to be honest, um, all I did is rest and recover and try and get as much sleep in, because in two days I had about two hours sleep tops. Um, it really was a crazy trip and uh, you know a fantastic trip I've got to tell you um, as indeed all European trips away with Chelsea are um, I want to use this as the a first video I want to talk about our performance talk about the way we approach the game and I, I thought we'd done all right you know and the, the problem is that when you're playing the greatest side in the world, which arguably is Barcelona right now. You've got to, when you get your chances, you've got to take them. And um, we've really been unlucky over the two legs, to be fair, haven't we? Hitting the woodwork three, four times and creating plenty of chances. And, uh, you know, there was at times where we were really pushing Barcelona back, but the problem and the differences between the two sides is that when they get an opportunity, they're clinical, almost mercenary, aren't they, you know? And at times it is PlayStation football, you know? Um, take the first goal. Um, the, one of the things, I guess, by being in the away end is you, you look at it from a bird's eye view down. And I could see the running before it was happening and before we even had ch chance to react to the pass and movement, the give and go. Messi was in and, you know, it looked ridiculous actually to tell you the truth the angle but before you know it you're one nil down and you're really really up against it you know and uh, and that kind of set the tone you know I, I thought it was a great um, reaction from us we, we you know we, we were back putting them under pressure and which we did in both games you know on many occasions during the course of the 90 minutes so it was never a tie like it was in the past where we were like backs against the wall them against us and we all knew what we had to do but we did it regardless um, it was a situation where we, we really went for it and it's a real shame because it's that difference in quality that high top top drop I mean we are talking about that level here aren't we you know with Barcelona a team where we were measured against down the years and I feel we've kind of fallen from that top draw uh, at three, four, five, six teams in the European leagues, your Bayern Munichs, your Real Madrids, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, where we once were, but unfortunately, we, you know, we, the way our transfer activity um, has gone over the last sort of three, four years, we've, 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 we've certainly not um, been as ambitious. You've only got to look at our side, sides back, back in the day, the, 208 the 209s it was littered with high quality class players that were getting the most sides you know your Balak's your Dogbers your Lampards your Terry's your Coles your Essians you know Patacek it was just it was high quality players and, and that's that's what we're missing you know and um, but nevertheless it just goes to show you perhaps how good Antonio Conte is because with those players how, how good would we be you know Perhaps his ambitions will be met if he does end up going to Paris Saint-Germain because we know they spend and we know that they, when they do top up their squad, it's it's full of high-quality players. And then maybe we'll see the, the brilliance of Antonio Conte. Or maybe as a football club, we need to remember where we were and where our, what, what our ambitions were. And, uh, in, in you know, we should have done that for Antonio Conte in, 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 in which case I felt... Had we had that assassin up front, that real quality individual that just puts the ball in the back of the net, and Harry Kane, you know, um, someone like that, um, we'd be um, perhaps going through to the quarterfinals right now, regardless of the fact that we've just played one of the best sides in the world. Because if you do analyse it, you know, the game over the t over the two legs, we were very very unlucky in. 
you have to say we did show a bit of intent. You know, we didn't do a, a Man United partner bus at home, try and nick one. We, you know, we we went for it in the first leg. Really went for it. And then the second leg against all odds, regardless of the psychological factor that we were missing chances and not getting that lady luck. And they were really, really clinical, 1-0 and then 2-0 up. We still, you know, kept our belief or at least, you know, our ability to go forward and attack them. So from that perspective, it's, you know, it's, it's really good. But it's also self-evident of the quality of players and the players that, you know, we should be um, looking to attract to come to Stamford Bridge if that's where we want to be. So from that perspective and the season as a whole, I think we all know that we're short in terms of numbers. We always have been. And uh, and also we're short in terms of that little bit of quality that makes all the difference when you get to the business end of these competitions. That said, we still have a chance of getting into that uh, top four, albeit that we've got Liverpool and Tottenham. Um, to come to Stamford Bridge so you know it's a little bit in our control a little bit although I expect Spurs to win most of their games and uh, even now especially with them out of the Champions League as well that, you know that, that I, I just feel that they'll be one of those four clubs and Liverpool Liverpool the only thing with Liverpool is we know they've got a disaster in them you know so maybe if we put a little bit of pressure on maybe we can nick that fourth spot We'll have to wait and see. But if you was a betting man, I think you'd probably bet against it. Now, look, our best possibility of winning a trophy this season is definitely the FA Cup. And, of course, this starts this week and on Sunday when we go to the King Power and we go to Leicester. And uh, this is a game where we've got to all race, just raise our, uh, our levels because they, they, you know, they're going to fancy it, especially with us playing in midweek and the disappointment of going out of Champions League. But they also know that this is, you know, this is our only chance of winning a trophy too. But it, they're going to be no mugs. They're, you know, they're a strong side, and especially at home. They've got some good players, and they played really well in the last game at Stamford Bridge against us. Um, so we're going to have to be on our metal. We're going to have to be really giving it absolutely everything. And uh, we've got another 5,000 fans, like we did in Barcelona, 5,000 fans going to Leicester, so we're cheering them on. And um, and hopefully uh, we can go to Wembley uh, for the semi-finals, and we can end the season with. Uh, I fancy if you look at the teams that are likely to be in that semi, it's possibly going to be Spurs, isn't it? Let's be fair. I think they'll win away at Swansea, and Manchester United. I think they'll beat Brighton. So if we can get through this, maybe United and Spurs can meet each other in one of the semis. But I reckon there'll be some hot balls about, don't you? Know? And I think. Um, more than likely um, uh, face Tottenham but if we can avoid that one and either Raw in the final well, yeah I'd fancy us I'd fancy us why not and it'd be a good way to win the season a bad season you know so there you go we're out of the Champions League I thought we'd do it I thought I really you know the belief and all that and we played well really well you can't criticise them apart from the fact that it's the same old thing creating lots of chances just not putting those chances in the back of the net. And uh, I've got to tell you also, we've 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 not had a great deal of luck this season, have, have we? You know, we've conceded at the wrong time. It's just lo lots of things that have happened this year, you know, with the fixtures arriving at the wrong time and all that. It's been one of those. But if we can end this season with an FA Cup, then, you know, I'll take that. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening. I'll, I'll see you all at King Power Sunday. And um, we we'll lose all draw up the Chelsea. John Bumstead, ex Chelsea player, over 400 games, all good ones by the way. Don't forget to subscribe to Chelsea SW6.